Huh. I'll be you, the technical advisor at the Education Advocacy Network. He's also National Secretary of uh, the Federation of Known State Education Institutions in uh, the country. Welcome to the program, Mr. Uh, Patrick Kaboyo. Thank you so much. And how are you Mr. doing? Again, I'm fine, thank you. And First, thank you. bring us up to speed with what you know on the inside. There's a lot that is going on. We know the ministry has said at least eight lives have been lost. Those are pupils in schools and uh, that 23 cases are now known to have been registered of EVD in schools. What do you know? Thank you so much. What do I know? Mm -hmm. I want to share with you facts. The first fact is that all our education institutions mm -hmm from the lowest to the highest, yeah. are defined by congestion. Congestion in the classroom, mm -hmm. congestion in the dormitories, save for international schools whose numbers in the classroom and dormitories uh, moderate. is moderate, yeah. let's say 20, 25 mm -hmm. maximum. But our national schools still suffer the challenge of congestion. That's a fact. Fact two is that we are also struggling with the learning loss mm. that was occasioned by COVID-19. Because COVID-19 found us unprepared and we had to struggle to make sure that schools reopen. Mm. The third fact is that when COVID hit us, there was a national COVID task force at higher level. Mm. But also the Ministry of Education and Sports had a sector COVID-19 task force, to which I'm a member and to which other colleagues were members. Yep. That task force helped a lot to put things right, to work on documents, to ensure preparedness, and schools were able to open. Another fact I should talk about is that uh, the Ebola is one of those diseases mm. that might not be fully explained by everybody, but rather by scientists. That's right. And we have also known it as a fact, we read in the papers, that doctors who are managing students, sorry, who are managing populations mm -hmm. in Fort Porto, in those areas, in the referral hospitals, passed on. Yeah. Now, if it is true that the cabinet has mm. gotten a brief from the technical head of the sector, and that's the Minister of Health, that with the congestion in Kampala and with the congestion in schools, mm -hmm. and we are heading to festive days, which is also a congestion season, mm -hmm. it's most likely that the spread can be unprecedented and almost draws us back to the other first phase when we are not prepared. That's right. Remember when there was uh, a lot of uh, uncertainty and cases were so many for COVID, schools were asked to send students to the bus parks here in the city. Mm -hmm. And that congestion was unprecedented. We yeah. didn't like it, but every child was there. Some were sleeping. And it is one that is hard to regulate, Ex however much you try. Exactly. To. Yeah. You cannot because it brings anxiety. Parents, mm -hmm. teachers, learners, and of course you know that uh, some teachers are also parents. Yeah. So when, to me, government communicates ahead of time that according to cabinet, that is what I have agreed. Mm. To me, it should give us an opportunity to plan better. To plan better on how to close the schools and mm. send students back home. Yeah. But also to plan better as a country to see if there is um, a good time that we are having on our side, mm. both schools and parents, let's say, from 26th November to January. Those are roughly, we can say, coming to three months. Mm. Can we plan a recovery plan for, can we have a recovery plan mm. to ensure that there is a progressive strategy for catch-up? Catch-up meaning that schools, as we speak, mm. have been struggling with uh, completing 
the syllabus. Yeah, just allow me interject there yes. before we get to that point to how schools are adopting and what particular plans shall be adopted uh, to ensure that uh, things work the way uh, that is uh, best for the learners or even uh, management. About the eight lives lost and the 23 uh, cases of Ebola, it is alarming when you hear it. How are the schools that have been affected coping? Of course, I should also say it as another fact, because mm. you asked me, I started with facts. Yeah. And another fact is that uh, when COVID hit us, schools concealed information mm. from authorities for two reasons. One, for fear of releasing the information and, and, causing, panic. and causing panic, but also it had an economic sense of it mm -hmm. that schools would be emptied and learners get out of the school. Are you suggesting that right now schools are holding information on cases of Ebola on the fear that when they do, it will be a disaster financially? It is not a fact from my side, mm -hmm. but as we are always taught in school, that once beaten, that was twice shy. shy. So since we have precedence, mm. it is critical that we analyze information from our schools because oftentimes we struggle to get information from those who have it. Mm. So if uh, the strategy to have uh, the schools close has come from those who decide for business to run in this country, mm. I think we have to humbly take it for the most fundamental human right mm. is the right to life. If, if learners have no life, there will be no school. Mm. And also, I want you to imagine if you, Mr. Higeni, a school calls you that please come and pick your son or daughter, has a bowler. There is a way how it you completely topples your Exactly, and, and you will uh, blame the school, you will think it's not supposed to be your child, but the school has communicated. Mm. So if that experience gets on to many parents, then they will ask, what is government doing? Where is government? Did they see this happening? Yeah. So we know that schools, for instance, in the local governments, have the leadership of... Uh, of, of those DOs and cows at that level. Mm. But when it comes to the macro policy to decide what should be done, the mandate rests in the minister. In the minister. And you seem to be speaking to parents who might be skeptical about uh, government's decision to close schools by the 25th of November. The fact that it doesn't have to reach a point where parents question how it happened, where was government. Government is taking the initiative as early as possible to ensure that doesn't happen. Is that what you... Indeed, the, when you listen to what people are saying, what politicians are posting, mm -hmm. what sentiments people have, they say now learners have been sent home, you know, the two weeks have been cut short. That's right. But I want to tell viewers and whoever is following us that... Uh, Learning does not take place only in the four walls of the classroom. Yeah, sure. There is learning at home. Mm. There is learning wherever these learners will be, as long as the infrastructure is well put mm. for them to benefit. to benefit. There is also learning beyond the classroom or beyond the content that is in the syllabus. Mm. But of course, the one in the classroom is uh, formal, is structured, However, for us to ensure that uh, learning continues, mm. then we have to work on the homes, the homes and communities and also strengthen structures, including the local council structures. You know that at every local council, there is a secretary for education. education. But do they really do they education do in communities? Are they doing their job? Okay, allow me <coughs> the... the uh, naysayer on that particular aspect because it's a bit of a long shot to ask for the kind of infrastructure that allows for learners to continue the process effectively as they were doing in school. That speaks of, uh, is there a framework that has been developed by the schools in collaboration with the Minister of Education to ensure that when they depart before on the 25th of November, there's going to be a deliberate effort either 
uh, calls from schools to ensure what the parents are doing and how they are doing it so that the learners, you know, uh, continue the learning process? Not at all, because that is a process. Mm. It cannot be an event. What I know is that um, during COVID, there was a strategy to have an abridged curriculum. Mm -hmm. and it has that, been abandoned? No. Mm. The abridged curriculum was indeed developed and shared mm. for teachers to implement. But of course, you know, the country is, is not uh, a small one. Mm. It is big. There are those other stakeholders who thought that uh, mm. abridging the curriculum was to throw out some content That's right. and have some left. But actually, the technical people in charge of that were to compress content that can mm. be priority okay. for learning. Even when the abridged curriculum it? was shared, mm. it's not that 100% those who should take it took it. Mm. Some, of course, continued behaving in their traditional, traditional ways, ways, but the process was there. The only worry I have is that if these two weeks are looked at mere two weeks, mm. they may not consider it as time lost. Okay. But when we add the time we lost in COVID plus these two weeks, there has to be an improved abridging. Mm. All right, Mr. Patrick Kaboyo, I'm afraid we're going to have to take a break right now. But when we return, this conversation continues. We are talking EVD, Ebola virus disease, and its effects on the education system in light of the fact that schools must close by the 25th of November as directed by the Ministry of Education. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're glad you're still with us here on Morning Attain TV. If you are just joining us, welcome on board. We are discussing Ebola virus disease and how it has compelled Uganda to close schools early, and that is uh, 25th of November, as directed by the Ministry of Education. On the show, I was speaking to Patrick Kaboyo, and uh, we were getting perspective on uh, some of the issues uh, that are responsible for why we are here away from the fact that we are grappling with an outbreak of uh, Ebola. Right now, I've been joined by uh, Christopher Mogwanya, the National Treasurer for the Proprietors of uh, Education uh, International Association in Uganda. It's a bit of a complicated association there. Could you just bring us up to speed with this PPEIAU? Thank you very much. My name is Mugwanya Christopher, but maybe there was an error. It is proprietors of private education institutions association in wow. Uganda. All right. Uh, thank PR you for making it. Briefly, we just call it PR. Okay. We come on the backdrop of the fact that uh, the Ministry of Health says 23 cases have been confirmed in our schools. Mm -hmm. Of those, unfortunately, eight people have died, five have fully recovered, and uh, 16 were under isolation by the 4th of uh, November. Overall, 11 schools have been diagnosed, 11 schools have been found have been found to have Ebola, not schools being diagnosed. Mm -hmm. uh, five schools in Kampala, Capital City Authority, Wakiso District, and uh, Mobende all had children that were infected. It's a very, a very uh, grim uh, trajectory that we are uh, facing. But uh, let's first uh, take a look at uh, this uh, report where the minister, State Minister of Education, uh, Kaducho, has something to say. On 26th of October 2022, six school children were diagnosed with a deadly Ebola virus disease. According to the World Health Organization, children who contract Ebola stand at a higher risk of succumbing to the disease compared to adults. By 4th November 2022, at least 23 Ebola cases were registered in five schools in Kampala, Wakiso and Mwende districts. Eight children have since lost their lives to Ebola while 11 others have recovered. The 23 cases include learners in pre-primary and primary schools. One child in a baby class was stable and recovered. One in the primary six, unfortunately, the child died. While three children, one was in P2, another in P4, and P7, they, are, they were all in stable condition by the time this report was compiled. At the end of October 2022, Minister of Health Dr. Jen Rutha Cheng proposed a raft of recommendations to stop the further spread of Ebola in schools. 
including the possibility of cutting short the third school term. This proposal was subsequently presented to Cabinet and approved. Now, the Minister of Education and Sports, Janet Museveni, has directed all pre-primary, primary and secondary schools countrywide to close for the third term by the 25th of November, 2022, two weeks than earlier planned. The 2022-2023 schools and other institutions calendar earlier issued by the Ministry had indicated that the third term would close on the 9th of December, 2022. The Education Ministry believes that this measure will lead to decongestion and decrease the exposure of children in schools to Ebola. Schools have also been directed to bring forward the promotional end-of-term examinations. The schools will be required to conduct final and progressive promotional examination a little bit earlier, effective from next week. The Ministry of Health will issue guidelines on a safe return of learners to their home in the districts of Mobende and Kasanda district. Early closure will deal yet another blow to the effective delivery of the school curriculum in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, where schools were closed for about two years. School administrations and teachers of pre-primary, primary and secondary schools will have to make further adjustments to cover the two-week gap in the original 14-week school calendar, which had already been constrained by the COVID-19 lockdowns. NTV sampled reactions from some teachers. Much of the syllabus has been covered. If there are any things, there are just a very few things that have not been covered. The only challenge that we see ahead of us is that uh, the plan of examinations, since it still had some good time, the, the persons that prepare the examinations may not bring the exams right in time. Uh, but considering that previously our terms used to be 12 weeks and we've now been do we, we were having 14 weeks, so reducing them to 12 will affect us, but not as much as it would if it were 12 weeks. Annette Birunji, a mother of four children, believes the learners should have been allowed to complete the 14-week term. The school fees is going to go up to December. Now when you bring back our children, you're not going even to refund us. You know very well we've been suffering all that we have faced previous, previously in COVID. State Minister for Primary Education, Dr. Joyce Moriku Kaduchu, assured parents that their children will not lose much by returning home two weeks earlier than expected. That two weeks... In the previous years, the teachers used for marking and the children are waiting. Let the children go home. But the children will get report cut at a later time. The Education Ministry also urged parents to make the home safe for the learners that will return home on Friday, the 25th of November, 2022. NTV Tonight, Rita Kanyamujuni. Uh, thanks, uh, Rita Kanamjuni, for that uh, report. And, of course, it highlighted the fact that uh, schools have two weeks uh, to be able to wrap up just about everything so that learners can return to school. We are now joined by uh, Mr. Uh, Christopher Mogwanya. He's a national treasurer at uh, the Proprietors of Education, Institute, Private Education Institutions Association in uh, Uganda. Good morning. Good morning. There's a lot going on, and we were trying to patch up and understand exactly what kind of framework is being rolled out to ensure that uh, already affected learners by COVID-19 and other hardships uh, be able to continue the learning process without, again, the disruption, which is the latest, and uh, that is the Ebola outbreak. Your association, mm -hmm. you have two weeks yes, uh, to figure out how best to compress whatever you had to do mm -hmm. for the rest of uh, the, the other days that mm -hmm. were supposed to go on if things were normal. Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? What are you rolling out? Thank you very much. I greet you fellow Ugandans. Uh, this time, unlike other, other times previously, mm -hmm. we want to thank the ministry that uh, much as this tragedy has come in, at mm -hmm. least we've been given some little time to prepare. Okay. The schools, the parents, the, the, even the, 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 man, the managers of education. W with the COVID, they could just dec uh, give a decree that uh, with effect from tomorrow morning, schools must be closed. And <laughs> you, I remember saw the chaos we had, but this yeah. time, of course, life is paramount. Mm -hmm. when, when the ministry detects that uh, uh, the children in schools are at risk, 
when such a directive is given, mm. we do support it. That's because right. We have to save the children. We cannot teach dead children. Yeah. Now, in our associations, like uh, proprietors of private education institutions association in Uganda, we are advising our our friends, our members, mm. to go by the change. At least we have been given some time to prepare. We have already started texting messages, mm. organizing uh, virtual meetings, mm. so that the teachers do prepare in the limited time we have. Let them adjust. Good enough, mm. these terms have been uh, more lengthy than uh, the pre before the, COVID. Before because COVID. normal terms before COVID were 11 weeks. The, 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 the longest could take 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And this one is adjusted to 12 weeks. Yeah. Uh, we trust our teachers. They have taught. Uh, these other weeks where maybe the revision may be reduced a bit mm. and uh, uh, surprisingly some directors were also planning to close before time okay because of uh, the constraint, lack of constraints the costs mm. uh, some are not allowed to go for loans because they already have uh, loans uh, that they are servicing mm. so we don't expect children to lose much life That's is right. paramount mm. but what we have to do is to adjust our members, let's adjust. Let's use some few days for revision. We prepare end of year examination so that children are promoted to new to new classes when they are alive. Okay. Yeah. There were also directives. I'm afraid we're going to have to stay with Mr. Christopher Mgwanya for a while. There were directives that were given to help in uh, streamlining how uh, learners and students will move when returning to their homes. For example, those that study outside of the uh, focal areas, the affected mm. districts of uh, Kassanda and Mobende had their specific directives. Yeah. Those that study in those districts but mm. reside in other districts mm. have also been told to follow a certain particular. Is that also something that you're part of and uh, you'll be helping streamline? Yeah, we're mm. going to have a board meeting. Yeah. Uh, on Monday, and then we, sh we shall have to, to come up with the, the way forward. Mm. We shall have to stri streamline, make sure that the communication reaches everywhere. Uh, and above all, we have to make sure that the, the, the child is very safe mm -hmm. and the community at large. All right. Earlier, before you came on board, uh, Mr. Patrick Kaboyo had spoken of uh, the congestion factor within the schools as one that is perhaps to blame for some of these issues. For example, if an outbreak occurs mm -hmm. and uh, there is no congestion, we could have saved the lives of the eight that we've lost or even helped halt mm -hmm. infections. Mm -hmm. Who is dropping the ball? If you, the proprietors, are managing schools where you are handling more numbers than your capacity, mm -hmm. should the government come and... I don't know exactly how this should be done, but who is dropping the ball on this? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, but when it comes to congestion, as far as viral diseases are concerned, mm -hmm. I don't know how the congestion can be, can be avoided, because even in church of uh, 15 people when it comes to such <laughs> such problems they, 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 they may yeah. be considered to be congested of course not from a public um, health perspective on uh, your case but i want to understand mm. why a school that mm. clearly lacks the capacity to handle 200 students mm. continues to get these students and uh, teach them or have them within their uh, confines mm. uh, of course we, we 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 don't support the congestion but sometimes also demand mm. demand matters but when we compare the public schools and the, and the private schools that's right the the public schools are more congested simply because they pay their, their fees are low and whatever then the pre somebody who comes to private school that comes mm. with a mind that has a, a cost to meet that's right but if those ones who are, who are meeting costs are congested that means that there is a demand for maybe for more schools, for more for more institutions to, 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 to carry on the capacity of Ugandans that need education. All right, Mr. Patrick Kaboyo, there's a lot that we need to look at in terms of how the private uh, uh, actors do because they take a whole lot of burden from the government uh, schools. The other day somebody opined that we take those that have been rejected and uh, it didn't go well with some people but at the end of the day if somebody has not gone to uh, Budo uh, whether they wanted to go there as their first option they are taken on by the private uh, schools. The education system seems to be riding on a runaway train and uh, you as actors within the private sector somebody can say you are playing alongside it because you make money. Is there what is your uh, public interest 
uh, factor that or is there a time when you say money aside let's make sure we give the best possible product thank you so much when you say money we all need money also government makes money mm. that's the reason it's borrowing up to now parliament will be listening to the request for borrowing sure that's why in government secondary schools for instance you will find teachers who are not paid by government but paid by PTA. Mm. That is money gotten from parents. You'll find that they cannot stand on their own. They are having a private wing within a government institution. Mm. So when we talk about money, it shouldn't be capped on like private actors. Okay. Money is a unifier for business, for engagement, for travel, for everything. Mm -hmm. But coming to your point, I find that uh, most sub-Saharan African countries are taking too long to act even when they listen. Mm. Nobody likes congestion, even in my home or in your home. That's right. You do aspire to have a sitting room which is spacious, mm -hmm. a bedroom which is spacious, even the kitchen. I always yeah. want wide kitchens. Yeah. So for you to reach there, it means you must have standards. And those standards come with resourcing. So yeah. what should government do to address the congestion is to perfectly move to have the public-private partnership mm. that is real. We shouldn't see government competing, for instance, with the private sector players because they are both educating the child who benefits the country. Mm. But when we say we are going to look at them, struggle in their processes of putting up schools, remember, government does not extend any coin to any school that is private. Mm -hmm. But the education... It doesn't the have to. For instance, we are, we've just concluded PLE, mm -hmm. a school like Chikaboja here, near here, mm -hmm. should have sat a number of candidates in the range of 500 to 600. Most city schools are sitting candidates equal to about five schools in the countryside. Mm. And when they make results and make those grades and they're announced, we don't say, as you know, we are celebrating the role of the private sector. No, they say the country has posted these grades mm. in collective responsibility. Mm. So that role cannot be taken for granted, but it should be re reciprocated through subventions, through taking some steps to ensure that there is little support. Imagine, if COVID was not to come, uh. would not realize that uh, we need to get so organized. But now Ebola is sending us more signals to get organized. If the other time government allocated only sanitizers, masks to selected schools, can we now see that our schools have closed during this Ebola season? Uh. When we return, there is a preparedness strategy to ensure that every school being disinfected, let's supply all schools with disinfectants because these liquids are not so expensive mm. but we'll find that uh, as we share the instruction to close the measures the result, the measures are unanimous are for all mm. but interventions to recover are specific the excuse is the resource envelope is small but these actors also contribute to the bigger tax base by remitting tax. At least as companies have the corporate social responsibility, mm. let also there be a spirit of giving back. Few liters of disinfectants, it motivates. To the private yes, it does and motivate then them. Yeah. the child will be safe. Okay. So the message here mm. is public-private partnership that's meaningful 
will address congestion okay. in schools. Uh, Mr. Mugwanya, yes, there is a lot of contestation by stakeholders, especially the parents and guardians of the uh, learners who are concerned that every time there is a halt to a school term, mm -hmm. their money, there is no communication on how that uh, equation is going to be solved. When schools restart the next year, mm -hmm. is there the possibility that parents will hear from schools about a reorganization of the payment system? For example, if uh, a parent is told since the last term was closed, uh, prematurely, we are willing to do 85% of fees and then waive the 15%. Is something, is something like that possible? Uh, uh, that, that depends. It's a hard one. The, you know, there's a difference between services and goods. Oh, okay. With, with the goods, if I buy 10 bags of cement from whatever and then mm -hmm. I use six, I, there's a way you can bring back the balance. But when it comes to service, <laughs> services, <laughs> services you're supposed to pay before consuming. And if you are going to, I come from Luzira. Yeah. If you bought a taxi going to Luzira, even if you get off from it, Parkers, mm. you have to meet the same. You have to meet because the same. Because you're going to give them the whole. We are going to teach their children, and then they get promoted to the other class. Mm. There's no way we shall also ask them that since we did not complete the other term, you first pay money for coaching so that we complete the, the previous year's mm. work. So uh, with service, I'm sure if it is for 10 weeks and the 12 are done, mm. of course these are, have been going to be lousing weeks. That's right. Yes, lousing weeks, revision. Mm. They, they have lost some values, like maybe schools which are going to organize speech days, whatever, oh, okay. concerts and whatever. But as far as academics are concerned, mm. I'm sure that the, the syllabi had been completed. So I need you to speak to the, an average well, parent out there yeah. and uh, tell them what this means. Because at the end of the day, a parent struggles usually to understand the public health threat and then the fact that education can continue, but mm -hmm. life, if mm -hmm. it is ended, then that will be more tragic. Yeah. Just speak to them like you would speak to a parent across the table. Oh, okay. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the way I started by thanking the government. I know the government loves Ugandans. And this, this directive is brought in a good spirit mm. just to save Ugandans. Then now I, I'm appealing to the government, that uh, I mean to the parents, that the issue of closing the school, the directive was to decongest, to keep the children safe. So when the children come back home, dear parents, don't be too busy for your children. Know what they are eating, know where they are, know what they see. If we, we, we send them back home from school, that means that we, the government has detected that the, school, the homes are safer. Now don't let your children to go to karaoke, to go to these celebrations. <laughs> we are going to festival seasons. Make sure that you know where your child is and make sure that you prepare because we are all moving towards the end of the term. Prepare them, give them some other skills. Go with, go with them in, in the business. If your business is not, is not in a congested area, you have a shop, you go with your child. Those children should learn how to handle the customers. They should learn how to do some domestic work. It is the time when we should leave some tasks from our maids, eh, from our house helpers. Let these children be helped to learn such. This is the right moment, such that uh, uh, they learn those other values and still they remain safe. I'm, I may only appeal to the government that in the case uh, this problem is is overcome, mm. let's plan for early reopening of uh, next academic year. Yeah. So that uh, by maybe, this year we started, I think it was, was it 10th Patrick? Yes. 10th oh, January. Yeah. So let's organize that. And also parents should have it in mind that should this problem uh, end, they should also sp uh, spend money sparingly, knowing that uh, after immediately after Christmas and whatever, the schools are going to be reopened. Let it not come as an accident. Let's spend sparingly, knowing that school, the, the academic term is opening very soon. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Christopher Mugwanya, for that. We shall take another break and return to wrap up this uh, conversation on how EVD or Ebola virus disease is affecting the country, most especially with regard to the closure of schools by the 25th of October. Stay with us. Morning at NTV. 
Welcome back. We're glad you're still watching Morning at NTV. The hashtag on Twitter is exactly that, Morning at NTV. We are also streaming live on Facebook as well as on YouTube. But before we went into the break, Mr. Christopher Mugwanya was speaking to parents out there who may find themselves in a sport of bother, wondering how their money's worth won't be well experienced. At the end of the day, the question is simple. Public health matters first because we shall not teach a dead body and losing your child because you want your money's worth doesn't actually make sense. Let's return to the conversation, of course, as we enter the final segment. We were trying to understand exactly how the school system can be improved to tackle or rather to deal with some of these uh, particular uh, challenges and uh, how they are, uh, how interventions are made. Allow me, Patrick Caboyo, to pose this question to you and see exactly how this can be rectified. The communication channels between the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health and the schools is something that many of us out there are wondering how effective it is, how timely and how prompt to the extent that it's not a case of directives being issued and there you have to, well, take them on as they have. Has there been particular engagement at every level to ensure that all stakeholders are on the same page. Thank you. I want to state that uh, during COVID, we had a sector COVID committee mm. where you are a member and we are members. That's right. So here the call is to urgently have that sector committee for COVID mm. now given another role for Ebola yeah. reconstituted. And that can only come if the interministerial committee is also strengthened. We want to see actors in the Ministry of Transport because mm. the transportation of our learners is across mm. the country mm. brought to table Ministry of Health, Ministry of Local Government, mm. Ministry of Finance because they will tell you there is no money but this Ebola will require resources mm. including private sector actors and civil society. Then when we sit on table, government will issue what it has to be delivered by actors like us who already understand. Because it's common knowledge that government sometimes lacks proper communication. But if communication is given to those who reach the ground, mm. it goes as information and not as a directive which is misunderstood. So the call here is to strengthen the COVID committee at the ministry. Mm. I hope Haji Mulindwa is watching and listening. Mm. We need to be called and have this information trickle down to the parent who cannot watch this NTV. Mm. But we have systems that we can use. Okay. So Minister of Health should not speak from their offices, the but we need to be a team mm. and work as a team. Okay. Yes. Uh, there was something we were talking about before we came back on air uh, during our break. The aspect of uh, fees collection in bits. And mm. uh, you said it's going to affect <laughs> many schools. Yes. One would expect, for example, for the schools to say, well, since we are all grappling with an outbreak and uh, here we are, we are trying to deal with the situation, mm. it's okay. You seem to be lamenting on that. No, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. The way I said, uh -huh. uh, a service is different from the a goods. Good, uh, good, yeah. Of course, to enjoy the service, you have to pay for it before. That's why those people who <laughs> fly, <laughs> they pay their, their flight tickets three Big, months two, earlier. You know. That's why you say you enjoy sitting in a plane, they bring juice and whatever. The moment you don't pay for the service before, <laughs> it, it may cause problems. So yeah. I have some schools who are, that are going through challenges mm. that... Uh, Sometimes parents pay the first installment at the beginning, mm -hmm. then they pay the last installment during the time of visiting the children. Yeah. Now time comes in, time came in when the VDs were banned. Mm -hmm. So we appeal to those parents who have not yet completed their obligations, use any means because you are the bosses of the, the, the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, schools depend on parents. That's right. Once parents don't pay, once parents don't support them, they cannot uh, leave and they cannot offer services. So we, we apologize to the parents who did not visit their children, but it was for the safety of our children. But if you still have any obligation, please do that obligation so that schools prepare the examinations and have our uh, children 
promoted to the next level. Okay, the there is something level. that we didn't tackle very, very well, the aspect mm -hmm. of transport back home and how these learners will be traveling. Uh, the ministry has suggested, like I said earlier, that those that uh, reside within the districts that are affected mm -hmm. have a certain uh, criteria they should follow, mm -hmm. as well as those that are studying in the districts that are affected but stay in other districts. Mm -hmm. What is on the ground? What have you been told? What are you going to implement? Now, the wife said, we're going to have a board meeting on Monday 14th. Yeah. And buses then, should be availed? Yeah, we are going to come up with with means. We mm -hmm. shall avail the bus. Of course, the, of course, the school buses will come up. Mm -hmm. But we shall have a clear program, and then the dates, and then the routes, right. so that we don't uh, face uh, such challenges. All right. Now, EVD, or Ebola virus, this is, we are pretty sure, is uh, something that we are going to uh, be dealing with for the next uh, three months to ensure that it's completely dealt with, especially within the schools. I'm hoping the festive season doesn't complicate things. Let's discuss the next year. Let's say, for example, Ebola is dealt with. What is the latest on curriculum development, Mr. Kaboyo? Thank you so much. Uh, the lower secondary school curriculum is being implemented in mm -hmm. all secondary schools. Yeah. And I'm aware that the teams from the Ministry of Education are almost going into the field to mm -hmm. do assessment and finding out what has been done. But this is where we also call for joint collaboration mm -hmm. and partnership, partnership yeah. that they shouldn't go alone they should go with other actors mm. to be able to get uh, a feel. For us who do some work in audit, you can't have a complete cycle of audit mm. if you don't do the external and internal. Um, yeah. So you can't self-medicate, you go to a doctor out. Sure. So it has to be a team that is multi-sectoral so that the result is, is clear and, and credible. But also to state is that uh, processes are uh, in for the review of the A-level curriculum mm. because I'm a member of the task force mm. since inception. And uh, I'm also told that after the A-level, the primary school curriculum will also need to be reviewed. Mm. But as we do all this, we need to bring the parent on board, the learner on yeah. board mm. to understand. And this can only be done through advocacy. And that's why now we are engaging within advocacy efforts at all levels, including having PIAO to be to have membership to advocacy machines. Yeah. Because if you do good things, whether you are government or private or anybody, you don't need to cover a good thing. To wrap it, you mm. should open it. Open and it. you can only open the good things happening mm. through advocacy. So we are on the right track, but the most pressing thing now should be planning. Yes, the directive has come out, school should be closed. Mm. Then what next? Are we going to see a plan of action from the 26th of November to January mm. that this is going to be the program to engage our learners. If not, get them in disco halls, on roads loitering, becoming criminals. If you go to police stations, you'll find them arrested as juveniles. So mm. there has to be a program to be. really mm. to support these boys and girls. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll take the opportunity to use the fact that uh, I'm speaking to uh, stakeholders or uh, conchos within the, the private uh, education uh, sector. There was concern when the president uh, made those remarks and uh, eventually saw through a policy uh, that pays science teachers a little bit more than uh, the arts counterparts. Many people have uh, begun to see a very grim trajectory mm -hmm. where in schools there is now class. Mm -hmm. The science teachers get a lot more money than the arts counterparts. I don't know whether in private schools the science teachers are advocating for the same or it's something that you're considering. How are you grappling with that? Thank you very or much. Or for you, you've remained neutral. Thank you very much. For me, mainly, 
mm. in primary where yeah. we don't categorize the teachers but on the very idea mm. uh, I am I'm, I'm still insisting that the president was mis mis misadvised misadvised yes. that yeah because uh, categorizing people is as if you you are against god <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is God who created uh, yeah. the scientists, yes. and, and, and one does not uh, like to fail science or to mm. pass them. That's it right. is God. So he gave us different talents. So if you, you, you minimize that the, the other one is a footballer, so he is he's, 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 he's not important in, the, in a certain area. We cannot be talented the same way. Mm. I think the artists are also very much very important. important. That's why you have the, the science of art and also have the art of science. Mm. Science without art, you cannot, you can't it cannot really. be designed. Mm. So I think it is God who created us different. We should get the same pay. I think Patrick being in second, yeah. maybe he has... In fact, he's a, he's a technical advisor yeah. to the Education Advocacy Network. Yes. That means you are very mm. well suited to give us technical advice and even I, the president. I, I want to give technical advice <laughs> to the president <laughs> okay, if he's please listening. <laughs> yeah. The problem we have in this country is that the president is surrounded by very many liars who want to give him the information to benefit their interest. Uh -huh. Most times you ask, how do things happen? Because we love the president, we love this country, we love our work. That's right. What the president reached out to, 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 to pronounce himself, I feel strongly uh -huh. that it should be reversed. Because out there on the ground, teachers cannot speak because they fear. Yeah. But for us who are in advocacy, our work is to pass the message that we have got on record. It has distorted the delivery of education, where some are seen as those ones. But also I was in a school, for instance, where a teacher was asked to address and to communicate his frustration. He started by addressing, saying the teachers of science, the head teacher, the director, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the you get the reverse change. protocol. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, and, and because just, of that. Just repeat that for us. What did he do? The teacher said, coming to make his mm -hmm. statement, uh -huh, uh -huh. the teachers of science, mm -hmm. the head teacher, <laughs> the director, ladies and gentlemen, and we burst into laughter, <laughs> meaning that mm. protocol has to be no, respected. Uh, respected. We know for sure that it can be a pilot. Yeah. We are testing the waters. Mm -hmm. But if any institution is to carry out a study, or if a university has to do a research on this, yeah. findings are very clear in the glass that it is a decision that should be reviewed. Mm. Reviewed for the good of education, yeah. lest we are going to distort. And to me, the Education Policy Review Commission in this country doing a lot of work to reform should have that as the first step mm. to reform me because if you reform by disenfranchising by discriminating it, it has a lot emotions cannot be measured mm. you cannot tell that this man is about to bust mm. is the one who knows, the one who knows so, yeah. but you can see some early warning signs mm. and for us the advocates is to guide, is yeah. to advise. Then after the show, somebody said, but how could you say that? The president will be annoyed. But the president should have right information. And those near him should advise him rightly. Uh -huh. That is the best we can do for our country. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Patrick Kawoyo, the technical advisor, like we said, to the Education Advocacy Network. I also understand you are the National Secretary to the Federation of Non-State Education Institutions. We are emboldened by your perspectives and insight on this matter, as well as Mr. Christopher Mugwanya, who I share a name with, the Treasurer, National Treasurer of the Proprietors of Private Education Institutions Association in Uganda. Interesting there. I always grapple with that, but no doubt I've been able to overcome it on this particular morning. It's been a pleasure having your company on Morning at NTV this 10th day of November 2022. Let's just do our final